couple of days ago, I posted this question or these series of questions on my blog. This Sunday, I'm preaching on the connection between the biblical concept of joy and the psychological concept of flow, and I need some help. And these questions, when does time stop for you? When do you find yourself doing exactly what you want to be doing and never wanting it to end? Is it painting or making love or playing volleyball or talking before a group? I think that's only mine. Um, and you guys always want it to end, I know that. Or talking before a group or rock climbing or listening sympathetically to someone else's troubles? These questions come from Dr. Martin Seligman, a positive psychologist. If you have an answer to any of these questions, please post away. So this is usually when I have a busy week, I solicit the congregation to try to get long answers to questions that I can read during the message doing my job. A few people did post responses, and Amber, one of the first to post, said this. I've been mulling this question around, and my conclusion is that, for me, it's lots of seemingly little things. Snuggling up with one of my kids on the rare occasion that they'll sit still. When supper's over and the kitchen is cleaned up and we can relax and just be as a family. Having a deep conversation and really connecting with someone. Losing myself in a great book in the tub after the house is quieted down for the night. Talking with women about their birthing experiences and dreaming of becoming a midwife. Having my breath taken away by a fiery sunrise. All of these and more are when and where I experience joy. Thanks for getting me to think about them, John. I asked about flow slash joy. She responded with joy. So which is it? Or probably more correctly, how do they even come close to relate, relating to each other? All week long, for the last couple of weeks, I've been seeing the Christian understanding of joy and this psychological idea of flow as being synonymous. Flow, for those of you who aren't into psychology, I've discovered that lots of people into psychology haven't heard about it. Flow is that thing that you experience when you are totally lost in a moment. Time disappears when you're engaging some kind of challenge or engaging some kind of beauty or something that just stuns you and takes you away. In moments of flow, your focus is super clear, and you enter into a deep kind of groove and almost lose track of your very self. For Dr. Seligman, this author of positive, the Positive Psychology book, flow is a deep river kind of experience, as opposed to a shallow stream kind of pleasure experience. Pleasure has elements of joy in it and elements of flow in it, but flow is much deeper than something that's just temporal or fleeting or superficial. So flow is to pleasure what joy is to happiness. From a biblical perspective, joy is not just a happy, clappy, smiley, heart playing, everything's going my way, smiley kind of day. I had two smileys in there. I'm going to stop commenting on my own message. It, a little too much Ritalin this morning, I think, or something going on. Joy can express itself in those superficial places, but the real deep definition of what joy is, biblically and in the Christian worldview, is much, much more. It runs very deep in a person's life. It's something that's so deep that even when times of stress or pain or loss or difficulty or confusion come into your life, you can still have this deep abiding sense of joy. The Apostle Paul, at one point when he was in, the prison, in prison and didn't know whether he was going to live to get out of it, was, it, it's written, sang with his prison mates. That is born out of joy. Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed and the next day was going to be crucified, prayed a prayer where he spoke of joy in these words to the Father. Now I'm returning to you. I'm saying these things in my prayer in the world's hearing so that my people can experience my joy completed in them. So joy 
in the biblical sense, runs so deep, it can even be felt in times of suffering. It's a sense of rightness that transcends circumstances. It doesn't always have to be happy, which was Bill's point when he was the next guy, I think, to post on that question on my blog. Bill said, I would say flow happens for me differently. It doesn't have to be things I enjoy or never want to end, but more when my brain is fully engaged, fixing, uh, doing paperwork, trying to find a missing entry, fixing the car, mechanics work, putting together a proposal or writing down the plan for my next great business idea. When these times occur, I come away from them feeling accomplishment and fulfillment, which for me is a form of joy. So on Wednesday night, a group of people who've been meeting at my place for a couple of months started to talk about Bill's answer to where he finds flow and this whole flow experience a bit more. And I asked, what's the goal in those flow moments? Everybody had a whole bunch of different moments where they experienced it, but often, what's the end result or goal of those experiences? What's driving you? And for Bill and most of us in the room that night, it was some kind of a challenge that needed to be resolved. We experienced flow when we were in a moment when, where we were attempting to bring resolution to some kind of a challenge or problem. Flow happens often in moments when you're trying to make it right. So for Zach, that was when he's editing video, when he's got to get the right clips at the right length and the right way put together until it's just right. And until it's right, he can sit at the computer for eight hours, caught up in a moment of flow. For a chartered accountant that I talked to after church last Sunday, who's new to New Hope, Stephanie, she said she has those moments when she's doing accounting and she's got a big problem and everything's a mess on the books, and then she finds that one thing and it's like the whole series of books just defrags and it comes together and the world is as it should be again and things are made right. And for Margaret, on Wednesday night, it was flow happens when people act in a way, and she used the example of, of people giving water, clean water, to a young boy in Africa who never had much clean water. In moments like that, there is flow. And as we discussed all these things being right moments, a Bible passage came to mind that I had been reading for another group already, this one from the book of Hebrews. By his Son, God the Father, so he's talking about Jesus, God the Father created the world in the beginning through Christ, and it will all belong to the Son at the end. The Son perfectly mirrors God and is stamped with God's nature. He holds everything together by what he says, powerful words. And he says to the Son, you're God, and on the throne for good. And then these last two lines, your rule makes everything right. You love it, Jesus, when things are right. The heart of God is a heart that is seeking, actively seeking, to make everything right. So when you experience the rightness of a moment, whatever your moment is and whatever circumstance, a moment that maybe is already right and made right by God, holding a child or watching a sunrise or bringing a baby into the world, or when you're part of a moment where God is making something right through you, through your skills, your strengths, your passions, your gifting, the fact that you're there at that time, and time is lost, and you are lost, and you're caught up in the flow, you are mirroring the heart of Christ, the heart of God in those moments. Because like you, God loves it when things are right, the way they should be. 